Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again. This is episode 4 of 5 on Waves, and in Test 2 Plus fashion, since this is episode 4, we're going to blow this out of the water. That is a pun. I intended it. That's what's happening. Now, we've already talked about with Kyle Tierman, our surfer and YouTuber, we talked about what waves are and what they're made of and how important it is to understand them if you're going to do something like surfing. You need to understand what's going on in the ocean and all the different things that can affect that. But today, we're going to talk a bit about how waves have shaped history and our experience as humans. You know, Earth's waves have changed not just the face of the planet through erosion, but it changes how we experience the planet. You know, when you're on a ship, you can get seasick from waves. That's a big deal. But you can also maybe even hear the waves right now. Waves hit the Earth. And th although most people don't hear it, the Earth has a very low frequency hum. Some scientists think that there are people who are sensitive to it all over the world. You know, it could cause headaches and nosebleeds and all sorts of things, but they believe that the hum is generated by ocean waves, by waves hitting the earth. Waves are just energy. It's like any other kind of wave, light waves and sound waves. Waves in the ocean are energy. So when they hit the ocean floor, the pressure and energy of that wave, some of that goes into the earth, causing the earth to vibrate ever so slightly. But when you compound that across all of these different waves, the moon moving the tides around the planet, it could potentially be causing this hum. The unending wave vibrations create this hum potentially, and it can go maybe even all the way to the Earth's core. We're still learning a lot about this. Of course, that's kind of more whoa. At the surface level, waves can cause all sorts of problems as well. The contour of the ocean floor or the way that waves hit each other and turn into these different forms can cause problems with seasickness. They can cause problems with people on the surface upending ships and things. But the most common way that we think of that waves become destructive is tsunamis, which we started talking about with Kyle yesterday. Tsunamis have happened throughout history. And when you talk about tsunamis, you can talk about them in ancient times by looking at tsunami deposits. A typical tsunami deposit is something that's less than 25 centimeters thick and can be found inside of the geologic record. They extend hundreds of meters inland from the beach and the deposits thicken and then kind of thin out as they move toward the shore. So you can see where the tsunami ended. It blankets a landscape. Because if you think about it, with what we've been talking about in this series, with such a big period, that whole wave has to be expressed once it hits the shore. The energy doesn't just stop once it hits the beach. That's not how waves work. Instead, all of that energy pulls all of that water all the way up throughout its period. And it ends up covering and blanketing a whole huge area. So in 8150 BC, we know that there was a tsunami they call it the Storega tsunami, and it started in the Norwegian Sea off the coast of, where else? Norway. It was caused by a giant underwater landslide, much like what we were saying yesterday, wind can cause these little waves, you know, things with a few feet and a few seconds of period. But when you're talking about periods the size of a tsunami, they have to be caused by something even stronger than wind energy. So by looking into the geologic record, Archaeologists have found tsunami deposits in Scotland as far as 50 miles inland. This giant underwater landslide, which caused the Storega tsunami, created deposits found in Scotland 50 miles inland. The same tsunami destroyed the Doggerland land bridge, which linked Great Britain with Denmark and the Netherlands. After this, Great Britain became an island. It was siloed from the rest of Europe, and Mesolithic culture was forced to develop independently after that. European settlers had to move over there by boat later on in history. So this tsunami completely changed the course of the people who had moved onto what was now an island in Britain. So Polynesian society, for example, may have been completely shaped by tsunamis. Now, Polynesians live in islands in the Pacific. So James Goff from the University of New South Wales has a theory. Based on geologic and anthropological evidence, 
We know that Polynesian settlers were expanding from New Guinea to Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa over the course of about 500 years. This is in BCE. Then in 2800 BCE, an earthquake in the tonga Kermadec subduction zone caused a tsunami. At that point, Polynesian expansion pretty much halted for about 2,000 years. The timing of the tsunami lines up in the geologic calendar with the stopping of that expansion. Then in the 15th century, Polynesians began to spread across the Pacific Ocean. They discovered 500 different habitable islands, but two major tsunamis hit in 1025 and 1120 AD, and the Polynesian culture contracted again. And experts believe that tsunamis and the cultural changes in the Polynesian like diaspora were connected. And it's not just in the Pacific. Ammianus Marcellinus wrote in 366 AD that in the Mediterranean, on the island of Crete, quote, the sea was driven backwards and the very depths were uncovered so that many marine animals were left sticking in the mud. The waves, as if raging against the violence with which they had been driven back, rose and swelling over the boiling shallows, beat up the islands, leveling cities and houses wherever they encountered them. All the elements were in furious discord and the whole face of the world seemed turned upside down, revealing the most extraordinary sights. Now, if you didn't know anything about tsunamis, and we couldn't use the geologic record in combination with writings like this to figure out what was going on, that would just seem like a crazy story, like the gods were punishing these ancient people. But now that we can connect tsunamis and how they've shaped human history, we can say, oh, this guy is writing about a tsunami that must have happened in the Mediterranean region at about 366 Common Era. He continues that it drowned many thousand men. We'll actually put the transcript for this whole thing in the description. It's really, really incredible. It's kind of scary. Very cool. So check that out. These are just a couple of different examples of how tsunamis have shaped human history. Waves in general continue to shape our experience and are a major focus of scientific research. I mean, waves have buried cities, they've destroyed civilizations, earthquakes are basically waves in the same way that tsunamis are. So tomorrow we're gonna break down how some waves are even more crazy, like weaponizing them and discovering the beginnings of the universe. So make sure you come back for that. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>